So I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, we're getting close to 100 million records sold. You've got your star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame now, Judge and American Idol, huge UK tour coming out once again with all the hits. Are you happy? Are you happy, <laughs> I'm Lionel? glad you I'm, 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 I'm happy you asked that question. <laughs> and if I am not happy right now in this part of my life, then shame on me. You know what it is? You know, I was thinking of retiring as a Commodore. And then something came along called the Kenny Rogers and Lady and now the solo career. Okay, now you're supposed to just ride that all the way out, right? And then at, at the ripe old age of 200, someone calls on the phone and says, would you like to be the host of, uh, one of the co-hosts of the American Idol? And here's your hands and feet in the, and the, uh, in the cement and on top of that, the Kennedy Center honors. And, I, and I'm thinking, wait a minute, this is supposed to have been done a long time ago. But the ride is so much fun now yeah. because I'm not, before I was so busy trying to be and now I'm just kind of enjoying the, the, uh, the position now, I'm just kind of <laughs> king father, if you will. You know, I'm kind of walking through, but it's so fascinating that it's still working as well as it is. Yeah. It's, I suppose it's almost like it's all gravy, as we say in the UK now. <laughs> well, you know, I never take it for granted. I mean, this, is, this, is, this is Hollywood, young man. You know, no, no, the fact that they even give you a third chance at this. But you know what it is? I, I'm, for example, the shows now, for example. Glastonbury did something completely ridiculous. The third generation came along. And now they're at the show dressed. They come to the show dressed like me. <laughs> in the 70s and 80s. So, and the tattoos, they have tattoos. Well, I'll give you all this information so you can show the pictures. There are people who put tattoos, but that's me on their arm, permanently for life. Now, now, there's a point in my life where I go, I'm glad you're a fan, but there's a point where you go, really? I mean, you know, but I'm, they're having fun. I'm having fun. I come to the show, they sing every note, every song. So it's almost like if you can't enjoy this ride, shame on everybody. I mean, it's just too much fun. Was there ever a, a real time when you thought, no, I'm, I'm going to stop? Yeah, that was a, probably right after, let's say, the Olympics, right mm -hmm. after my father was ill, and I went through a very, I won't say a depression, but a massive depression, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, I never, I, my dad was my hero, so I went through that whole period of my life, and then um, it was something about the birth of my kid. You know, the uh, Miles came along, s and Nicole was already there, and I realized I had a group of people that were kind of looking up to me to be the, the head of the house. Mm. And I realized something else, something very terrifying. They didn't know what the hell I did for a living. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured at that particular point, let's go back and prove to the kids what I do. And yeah. so that was the incentive. And, of course, I got back into it and realized this is what I should be doing. Yeah. This, is, this is what I love doing. Yeah. Are you at your happiest then when you're on the stage? Yes. I can, I can honestly say that, that uh, there are moments when I find myself um, truthfully at peace on stage because everything is organic. I, mean, I know you might think it's rehearsed, but it is rehearsed. But after so many years, I know what that feels like. So I'm taking a breath for a moment. Once I step off of the stage, as I say to most people, most artists don't die on stage. <laughs> It's what happens when you walk off the stage. Mm -hmm. And so with me, it's the same. I, I just find that it's something so rewarding to be out there. And then when you get off stage, now you have to figure out something to do. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Well, let me first of all, let me, let me, let me towel off here, guys. Am yeah, I, sure. I, I'm sweating to death. This... Got a little powder? Oh, no, it's the coffee. I know. No, no, it's all right. Oh, you're it's, all right. You got it's, just, it's just. Sure. All right, I'm ready. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> At ease. No, it's the coffee. At ease. As long as it's not spritzy looking. Good, good, good. Yeah. Right, what was I thinking? Yeah, so, what we're saying, yeah, yeah, what, so what, what do you do then? Truthfully, um, I'm so in love with just being home and hanging with friends and family. You know, a lot of times people think that you want to get off so you can go on vacation. I am on vacation. And in fact, what I do is I book a tour to go on vacation. Think about it. I mean, you know, you want me to check into a hotel lie by the pool, and take selfies all day. I mean, what's, that's not a vacation. Or you want to go, let's, let's rent a house. Let's rent a house. And I'm now secluded 
from everybody. I like people. So I'm the first person to walk down into the village and say, okay, who's here? So I'm a glutton for pain, you know, and the fact is I want to be around the village. I want to be around people. So I find home this probably the most intriguing place ever where I can go through my stuff and see what I have. <laughs> Selfies must just be the bane of your life. Oh. You know, I have to get used to that. I, I, I must tell you. It's um, not going away. <laughs> it's not going away. I, I had to make peace with that. Um, truthfully, I had to make peace with that. Um, I was the guy who I had gotten used to the autograph time. You know, okay, five people with autographs, thank you very much. But what really frightened me one day was um, I'm sitting at a restaurant somewhere, and someone said, Lionel, that's a, a fabulous picture of you at the restaurant. Well, how, where are you? Well, I'm in New York. Well, what happened was a lady over there across the table took a picture of me, posted it on the thing, and now I'm... And I said to myself, holy crap, what is this mess? <laughs> My new world. My new world is I am now public wherever I am. And so you just have to get used to it. It's, it's, it's part of the new world that we live in, and it's not going to go away by any chance. But uh, you know, I complain to my kids a lot of times, don't film me at the breakfast table. <laughs> and, of course, they abided by that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just thinking, you, you said about the fans, well, the, the, the signature, the hair, the, the mustache. <laughs> is, 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 there a, is there a signature dish that you always go to in a, in a restaurant? Well, listen, I mean, my thing now is the food, get this now, ready? When I first came to, to England, uh, and I must tell you that part of the world, um, uh, no, there was not a signature dish because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to eat. It was, now the best restaurants in the world are sitting there, so it's, it's really kind of picking my choice. And if I have my way, it'll be a nice uh, steak uh, because protein on the road, Protein is the life's blood of your of your stability, and then of course carbs for the burning for the fuel. Mm. Now, what I can eat at home when I'm not touring is just the opposite. There's a lot of protein, but on the road, carb me up <laughs> because that's what it requires. But chicken is one of the safest things you can ever do. Chicken and steak, you know, and it depends on how far north you go in Europe. Then it's going to be a fish. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You know, what did the lady say to me one day? I, I, I was Thanksgiving. I was in um, I was in Stockholm. It was Thanksgiving. I said, I think I'll have a chicken for Thanksgiving. And the lady said, there's nothing with wings up here this time of year, sir. I said, oh, that's correct. I'll take a fish. <laughs> is, there, is there a signature dance move? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a signature dance move, mm -hmm. definitely. Mm -hmm. um, go back and look at any Commodore film. Mm -hmm. They, they've asked me several times to be on some dance shows and that stuff. I said, I only do Commodore Steps. That's it. So, so <laughs> we can dance this. But, yes, I go left, right, left, right. <laughs> and that's it. That's I mean, it. I mean, listen, it's hard enough remembering uh, the ly lyrics of the songs. You want me to have a dance step, too? <laughs> I mean, I used to think about it with Michael all the time. I said, wait a minute, get this straight. You have to do that dance step for the rest of your life. That's got to be the toughest. Cause that's, those are signature moves. Yeah. And let's take Fred Astaire. I mean, I'll give you all the ones, the, the great dancers of, the, mm -hmm. of our time. To be able to sit there and have a dance move on top of being able to sing like you used to yeah. 30 years ago. Just, can you make it any harder? No. no, no. no. What, did, what did Michael say when you said that to him? Well, he just said at that particular time, Lionel. It's no big deal. And I said, no big deal for your feet. It's a big deal for my feet. Well, you know, at the time, you know, listen, he was doing moves like standing on his toes mm. in loafers on stage. Okay? So, I mean, Brishnik we, Michael and I went to see Brishnikov one night um, uh, here in L.A. Um, it was a wonderful evening. He was there with the, uh, with the, uh, the dance group. Mm -hmm. And after the show was over with, we happened to be backstage when he took his slippers off and his his feet were absolutely gnarly to the point of, I mean, you could see where he's been standing on his toes was his business. And I said, I don't want my feet. To, no. <laughs> not, no, <laughs> not a dancer. Not a dancer. Now, I want to talk about the tour, but I also want to do this with you, if yes. I may, because I've been thinking about this, because you've written some of the classic songs of all time. Right, uh -huh. and your lyrics are always absolutely, you know, phenomenal. 
You know what's so funny? Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to correct you. Yes. I, I mean, I'm not correct you, but I'm, I'm going to add to that. Yes. Do you know when I started out in the business, mm -hmm. this was the, the critics in America would always write, oh, Lionel Richie with another sappy, sticky, gummy, syrupy song, love song. And then what happened was 10 years passed, 15 years passed, and now the same interviewers would come back to me and say, Lionel, do you have one of those classic love songs? <laughs> and I said to them, you fell in love, huh? <laughs> you know, as long to as your you, song. As long as you're single, <laughs> you know, that's come all oh, that crap. Uh. You know, and all of a sudden, as soon as you fall in love, I love you are the only three words that anybody wants to hear. Done. Perfect. So what I'm doing so here. what do you have here for So I'm here for you. <laughs> I, right. want, I want to do the wrong song. Okay? okay? All right. So I'm going to give you your lyrics, but you have to give me a different lyric. Okay? Okay, okay, good. good okay. Good. I like this. Okay. All right. Because you're, okay. Oh, no, you're testing okay. me. Test me. Okay. Yeah. You're once, twice, three times a... A flatmate. Whoa, what a feeling when you're blank on the ceiling. Hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> Terrible. That was a, that was a morbid one. I'm Cause, so sorry. Because I'm stuck on your girlfriend. <laughs> it's terrible. It's just, it's just, that could go, Maybe the originals that, were better. That, that, the originals are better. <laughs> That's why I'm easy, easy light. Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> so close with that it's one. So close. Yeah. So close that one. My love. There's only what in my life. There's only my cocker spaniel. <laughs> Again, it doesn't quite scan. It doesn't stand. It doesn't yes, scan. You know, no. It, it, you can see the words that I chose were the correct words. As you, you got it. You. Yeah. you got it absolutely yeah. right. In, in terms of the, the... That was good. No one's ever done it. Has no one ever done that? Yeah, do, you, go, you, do you want one more? Yes, give me one more. Okay. I like that. I like this. This is fun. Tamboli de se de moi, ya hey. Oh. Wombo wombo. I, I mean, I gotta. Wombo wombo. You, you gotta keep that. You gotta keep that in the right place. Yeah, that's that's, that's that, hard to get. That's out of a that hard one. one, isn't it? That's it. That's, that's that it. That was good. Oh no, no. Well done. Absol absolutely brilliant with those ones. Um, so, in terms of when you're about to go on stage, is there any particular song, and you hear that intro, the one that makes you always go yes, and there's the one that makes you go, here we go again. Well, here's what happens. I, I think everyone equates the intro of the song as being of the intro of the show as being the start. That's not the start. Mm. The start for me is walking down the tube, going to the stage, and you hear, that's the start of the show. Mm. I mean, to me, the crowd has the opening of everything because that tells me that they're excited. And no matter how I'm feeling, remember now, there's some nights when you walk out and you go, oh, God. Okay, we got to get past the first four songs, and then after that, I can. No, no. The adrenaline hits mm. on that, and it just gets better from there. Um, they can change my mind from whatever mood I'm in, because they came prepared to perform too. Mm. So yeah. the afros in the audience, <laughs> the mustaches in the audience, and by the way, those are the girls. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what I'm saying to you, what I'm saying to you, it's a full-on show. Yeah. So. So I'm going out to be amazed and wowed at what they're going to present to me, and that's what I look forward to every night. So you're going all over the UK with yeah. this tour coming up. Going up to Scotland as well, my Scotland, old hometown. Scotland, yes. That's a Scottish accent there. Well, it's terrible, to be quite honest with you, sir. Oh, that, that, yeah, that's but, very British. That, 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 you're right, right. Terribly English. It, it, very English, and it goes wrong. How about, it's a bra brecht moonlicht nicht the nicht. Like I said, my, my, it's, it's terrible. You see what I'm saying? I, I wouldn't even attempt that. I'm not telling what that would come out to sound like. But, you, but I, again, again, how wild can it get? They bring it. Yeah. I must tell you, have no idea how wild the audience is getting now. Because someone thinks, okay, three times a lady. It's going to be a nice love song, very quiet. It's the loudest most, in fact, I'll tell you the funniest story. One night during Three Times a Lady, I, I saw it happening. The, the guy was coming down front. He was trying to bring his girlfriend down to get a closer look. And the security guard says, you can't come. What does he do? He knocks the security guard out. A full-on fight is happening on Three Times a Lady. How is that possible? <laughs> I mean, but that's what I'm saying to you. you. You just never know 
But the show is there. Yeah. I can't wait. Oh, we can't wait to have you all over the UK. Tour coming up. Lionel, as always. Pleasure. Thank Pleasure. you, sir. And I'll see you very soon. See you there. Uh, again. Again? <laughs> <laughs>